Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Today, we're going to uh, take a look at a distro of Linux that uh, I've got installed on my uh, Acer laptop. But uh, I wanted to walk uh, you through the uh, the process, not the process of installing, but uh, do a review rather of uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS released in April. Hence the naming convention 20.04. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, I've got it installed in uh, Oracle Virtual Box 6.1 on my Farron OS Linux system. So let's take a look at it right after this. Okay, I'm in uh, Oracle Virtual Machine VirtualBox Manager here, and here is the setup that I have for Ubuntu uh, 20.04 LTS. Let's get into settings. I'll show you uh, what I've done here. I've got uh, it set up as Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. It's Linux, obviously 64-bit. On the system side, I've got uh, 4196 megabytes or 4 gigabytes of uh, uh, RAM for this particular uh, distro of Linux that I'm um, checking out for it for you and uh, showing you today. Um, got the hard disk set up, uh, 20 gigabytes of hard disk space. On the display side, I've got 128 megabytes of uh, virtual uh, video here, memory. And storage, uh, I'm pulling down a uh, ISO that I um, pulled down from uh, Ubuntu.com which is the 20.04 LTS, which is the long-term service release of Ubuntu. Audio, I'm just choosing the default ICH, AC96, Pulse Audio. For network, I'm selecting the network adapter bridged uh, with an ENP2S0 interface. And then uh, USB, I've just got 1.1 OHCI controller. So let's go ahead and click OK here and get back to uh, the Oracle Virtual Machine uh, Virtual Manager screen. Let's go ahead and click Start and get this thing fired up. And um, once it comes up, um, I'll get in and um, set this up. I think it should go up to 1920 by 1080 already because I, I went ahead and um, set up the VirtualBox Guest Editions uh, so that it would come up to the full resolution on the screen here. Um, I'm liking Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. It's it's really nice, um, and I'll take a look at that with you. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and click in here and put in my password. And let's see, it should come up to 1920 by 1080, hopefully. And it is 4 gigs of RAM on this virtual machine, so it's a little slow. There we go. Okay, so here we are. This is the new look. Uh, Focal Fossa is the uh, creature there on the screen. Uh, and um, they've done a lot of work, I have to, to admit. They've done a lot of work in this release of Ubuntu uh, 20.04. The last long-term service release of Ubuntu, of course, uh, you know, uh, was 18.04. Uh, the long-term service release of a distro in Ubuntu uh, is a five-year support release. And so this is a five-year support release of Ubuntu here uh, that we have. Uh, and so um, it should be a very nice release for quite some time. So let's go up and see what we have here. Uh, this is the panel. And so we've got Firefox web browser. We've got Thunderbird mail out of the box. We've got files, and I believe uh, this is... If I'm not mistaken. Let me go ahead and fire it up, see what we have. Um, and let's see here. Oops, I closed it. Open it again. And so um, 
not quite sure what this is. It, I want to think it's uh, PC Men FM, but I'm not absolutely sure. Um, so let's go ahead and close it. I'll get into it later. We've got Rhythmbox. We've got uh, LibreOffice Writer. We've got Ubuntu Software uh, Help. And then here's the virtual optical drive. So let's go ahead and click on the applications and take a look at that. We have the terminal. So if we fire up the terminal, Here's the terminal. We can set that up uh, however we want it. Um, we can set up multiple uh, tabs here on that if we like. Uh, if we do preferences here, and let's bring that down. And let's see here. We've got uh, profiles. I'm going to set up a data prof uh, pioneer profile. And let's do create. And um, I want to bump up the uh, terminal size here to 120, I believe 120 by 40 should be about right for this 1920 by 1080 screen. Um, I'm going to take off the custom font and um, see here for colors. I want to use something other than the system theme. I want to do the solarized dark theme here. And um, for custom font, I want to do that and bump that up to 14. Let's go up to 16, actually. Let's select that. And um, leave colors. We have that changed to what I want. And so now we can change that to... Data Pioneer is the default. Let's go ahead and close this. Close the terminal. Let's open the terminal once again. And we can, now we have the full screen. So I believe I have set up, um, you updated the system here to the latest update, but I'll go ahead and try that again. sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. And let's see if we got the, uh, put in the password see if we have the latest updates. I believe I did capture the latest updates. First thing I do when I install a new release of a distro is, is update it. Yeah, I've got it updated. So I'm showing zero upgraded, zero, zero newly installed, zero to remove, and none to, up, to upgrade. So we're good. The um, latest uh, kernel here for uh, Ubuntu 2004 LTS is 5.4.0- 29 dash generic. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of here. All right, so let's get back in and let's take a look at settings. And under settings here, got several things to look at. Uh, of course, I've got the resolution set for 1920 by 1080 landscape. Uh, one of the things that I notice here in Ubuntu that uh, I didn't notice before is it has something called fractal scaling or fractional scaling. If I turn it on, I'm able to actually um, go in and let's go ahead and change that resolution back here. Okay, I'm able to scale this for the icons and such so that way I can do either 100%, 125, 150, 175. I can go in between 100, 200, that kind of thing. I want to set it back to 100 here and I want to go ahead and apply that and keep the changes. All right, so I do have this uh, scaling fractional scaling capability now that's new to uh, Ubuntu. I did not notice that in 1804, so I think that's new. All right, so under network, uh, I am connected right now, wired. I do not have VPN set up. Bluetooth, uh, I have no Bluetooth here on, on this uh, desktop. This is the main PC. Uh, for background, I've got various things I can choose. Right now, I'm running this one, uh, but I have several ones that I can select from and of course you know how to change a background on, the, on a, an application so uh, on a platform rather for a distro of Linux so I'm not going to show you how to do that you, you know how to do that for appearance uh, here this is uh, something that's quite good I can choose light I can choose the standard or I can choose dark and I'm going to go ahead and choose the dark I like the dark theme here now for icon size come down here to the dock I can auto hide the dock if I want to uh, or I can not auto hide it. I want to turn that on. 
Um, and then I can change the size of the icons. And so let's make that smaller. Let's go down to, let's go 32. Position on the screen right now, it's on the left, okay? But I can change that to bottom or right. It's right and bottom. I like mine on the bottom, so I'm going to leave it on the bottom. Notifications area here. Uh, I can do a do not disturb for notifications. I can change the archive manager. I have backups turned on, but I, I'm using time shift or will use time shift as my uh, backup uh, application here. For date and time, I have that turned on. Uh, desktop sharing is on. Disk usage analyzer is on. Files is on. Network on. Power on. Printers is on. And it should have located my printer. We'll take a look at that. Let's take a look at it now. And notifications on. Sound alerts. All that. <coughs> okay, software updater is on as well. Search, I have files, calculator, calendar, characters, password and keys, and terminal for applications. I've got that notification turned on. Um, all right, so let's go back and take a look at, for privacy, um, connectivity checking, I've got it turned on. Location services is turned off. I can turn that on if I want to, but I'm choosing to leave that off right now. Um, Thunderbolt, no Thunderbolt support, file history and trash, uh, file history is turned on so I can go back and retrieve previous versions of files uh, in Ubuntu which is nice. Um, screen lock, I've got that uh, blank in fi every five minutes, I'm going to bump that up to never for now. And diagnostics, I've got that I believe in manual mode. All right, so let's go back and online accounts. I'm choosing not to mess with that right now. Uh, sharing, I'm not going to deal with that at the moment. Sound and power. Blank screen never. Automatic suspend is off. Displays, I've got the 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9 uh, screen, mouse and touchpad. Um, I've got the, the primary button on the mouse is left. Mouse speed is in the middle. Printers here, I've got uh, it auto detected my printer, which is an HP DeskJet 2600 printer. Very nice. I like that about Ubuntu. It uh, doesn't have not it does not have any issues finding your printer. Okay, so uh, the rest of this stuff pretty much is uh, the normal stuff. Get uh, four gigs of uh, memory here, so we got 3.9 available. Got an Intel Core i3 7100 or 7th generation processor running 3.9 gigahertz. I've got uh, this for graphics. Um, disk capacity is 21.5 gigabytes. I think it's actually set for 20 gigabytes, but I don't know why it's reporting 21.5. Uh, and then that's the OS name, the type, uh, GNOME version is GNOME is 3.36.1. This is running on GNOME. Uh, desktop 3.36.1. All right, so let's uh, let's close this, and uh, let's go back now and see what else we have. We have files, and uh, so again, um, I believe properties here, yeah, permissions, local network share. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and close that. And uh, what else do we have? Text editor. And um, so this is our text editor here. Looks like Kate. I'm not quite sure. It could be something else, but it looks like Kate. And uh, let's close that. And let's go back up here to software update. So this is the software updater. So it's checking for updates right now. You could do this. Uh, if you like in the GUI or you can do it manually as I showed you initially in the terminal um, so right now it is saying that we are up to date so we're good to go we can close that alright so let's go out to um, this the Ubuntu software center take a look at what we have there and in the Ubuntu software center when it comes up uh, it does take a few seconds for the catalog to be downloaded 
and set up. Uh, it's very nice. I like it. Uh, on the laptop I have, uh, I use this as well. So you can look at, you can explore what's available here. And so here are the editor's picks. Uh, Caden Live is one. I use Caden Live all the time for editing uh, my videos that I create uh, in Farron OS. Uh, Notepad Plus. Uh, I do like uh, LeafPad better. So let's see if LeafPad is available. So let me go ahead and put in LeafPad and hit enter. That LeafPad is there. So let's go ahead and install LeafPad. So when you click on LeafPad after you've selected it and click the install button. It's going to go ahead after you put in the password. And that should let you um, install LeafPad. So it's installing now and it's up to about 80, 90 percent. It's almost done actually. Um, so we'll get this installed and then I'll show you LeafPad real quick. Show you that it is now or should be in our menu selection for applications. And so it's uh, wrapping up the install right now. Sometimes it does take a few seconds longer than you think it should, but that's okay. Um, it will install it and it will let us uh, get in and take a look at it here momentarily. <laughs> okay, so it is installed and so let's go ahead and close the, the interface here. Come down to our show applications and uh, let's go over to all and you can see LeafPad now is there. So let's click it and bring it up. There we go. All right, so LeafPad is open, and let me expand it here. You actually can come up and bump this into the uh, top of the window here, and it will expand to full screen. So this is LeafPad. Uh, I like LeafPad because it's just cleaner, it's crisper. Um, you can do word wrapping here. We can do line numbers. Um, so you want to, you know, type in something like uh, this is a text editor. Okay, you can save it. And they can do a save as, you can save it as, and then do a data pioneer or documents. Uh, okay, and let's save that as a uh, sample.txt file and do save. And then let's go ahead and close LeafPad and then we'll come back to files. And we can see that under documents we do have the sample.txt file. If we want to open it, we can open it with text editor. And there it is. It should be uh, should have something in it though. Um, interesting. Let's see here. Let's open it with other application. Let's open it with the leaf pad that we just uh, installed. And there it is. So this is the text editor. Uh, so it, it did have content in it. And I'm not sure why the other one didn't show that. But anyway, so there you go. All right, so uh, let's take a look at, uh, I don't use Thunderbird Mail. You may use your Thunderbird Mail client. Uh, I use Proton Mail web-based, and I, so I don't use that, although there is a bridge for it. Um, LibreOffice Writer, so let's open that up. So LibreOffice is the default, um, default Office application suite for Ubuntu 20.04. It's been that way for quite some time. Let's click OK. And you can bump this up. All right. So this is a test document. All right. And so it's, you're running version 6.4 of LibreOffice for the first time. Yeah, it's true. And so if I do a file and I do a save as, and if I come over here to documents, and I can tell it that I want to save this as a... Um, test document oops not up here let's go up here let's do a test document dot odf or i can do dot docx if i want it is compatible with uh, microsoft office and so i'm going to use the word 207 2007 format and so there it is test document dot docx so let's go ahead and close this uh, out here and come back to files 
and go into documents and so there it is test document docx open with LibreOffice writer and there we go so um, if you go up to help and about LibreOffice it will tell us that we are running version 6.4.3.2 all right so let's go ahead and close that and so with LibreOffice of course not only do you have uh, the writer but you have presentation you've got the calc uh, and that kind of thing so all the full office suite is available here alright so let's get back into Ubuntu software uh, other than the editors picks which are the ones that the editors think are the the best selections for you you can come down to games and uh, it takes a few seconds to run this because it does have to download this for the first time and cache it uh, under the um, software center so when it does cache it the next time you open it will open right away if it doesn't open right away I will close it and move on but uh, there you go and so it will cache this information the next time you open it will be fine alright so we do have quite a selection here of games so if you're a gamer uh, you've got a lot of games here guys to select in Ubuntu 20.04 long term support uh, release here alright so let's get back and uh, so let's look at utilities. Let's let the utilities come up and cache. See what we have available. Uh, one utility that I always install pretty much uh, in every distro of Linux that I uh, fire up is one called GFTP, which is the GNOME File Transfer Protocol. Let's see if it's available here. Um, taking a look at what we have. Uh, SFTP client is available. Um, we've got... Um, some other things here so we can do a search uh, I believe uh, in here if we want but uh, let's just take a look what we got in the software and hmm alright so we've got quite a few things um, I wonder if we have time shift here keypass XC if you're uh, into keypass managers I, I use RoboForm through my web browser. Uh, I don't use that. All right, so let's go back. I didn't see that utility there. Um, you've got all these here. Finance, news and weather, education, social, entertainment, productivity, science, security, server and cloud, photo and video. Under photo and video, let's pull that up see what we have. We should have GIMP as a selection or an option. Let's take a look at it and see if it's available here got VLC media player um, as well and um, Kaden live as we mentioned that before handbrake I use handbrake for editing of my videos uh, I'm recording this video with simple screen recorder uh, in Farron but there it is here's GIMP so let's go ahead and select GIMP and let's go ahead and install GIMP here And so that's going to install GIMP and then we'll take a look at the version. It should be 2.10 I think, 2.10. That is the latest stable version and here's the channel. You can deselect that channel and select another if you like. Um, I think you'll like uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS guys. If you've, if you've ever used Ubuntu at all, especially if you've used 18.04 LTS uh, or 19.10 which is what the last version I used, I had on my laptop. Uh, now that I've got Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, I've got that installed on my new Acer laptop. Uh, it's a, a Core i7 laptop. I really like it. It's very fast. It uses the, uh, the NVMe M.2 hard drive, which has got a um, 500 uh, gigabyte NVMe and it uh, that thing flies. It's about ten times, six to ten times faster than a regular SSD drive. Okay, so it's installed, and so if I close it and come back and then hit all, and then come over to uh, let's see where is GIMP? There we go, GIMP. All right, bring GIMP up and we'll take a look at it. Yep, 2.10 latest version. First time you run GIMP, though, it does uh, have to run through uh, setting itself up, and so we'll uh, let it do that. All right, here we are. Let's bring that up to full screen. Let's do a help and uh, about GIMP. 
So we are at 2.10.18. I can check for updates to see if there are any updates, uh, but there are none. Okay, so let's go ahead and close it. So this is GIMP, and I don't have any uh, anything to actually pull up to show you. Uh, I don't think so. Let me do a file open, and if I go to uh, pictures, nope, don't have anything there. All right, so let's cancel that out and close it. All right, so uh, here under the applications, uh, under the all option, here we have additional drivers. So if you have proprietary drivers uh, that you're using, you can click on that and you can see uh, that you have available drivers. You have the VMware here from using a um, virtual machine, so it does have the SVGA2 adapter driver that's what it's using right now um, and I think that's the only driver that's available no proprietary drivers are in use if for Ubuntu software here are the uh, downloadable uh, software and updates that you can use here in Ubuntu can can canonical supported the community maintained proprietary drivers software restricted you can uncheck or check those I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I didn't mean to do that. All right, so you can do from source code. If you're adventurous and you want to install in source code, you can do that as well. You can download from a server for the United States, or you can choose an other server if you'd like. Uh, there are many to choose from worldwide here. And uh, But I'm leaving it on server for the United States. Now, what this is going to do is when I do update the system, it will go out and pick the fastest server. Okay, let's cancel. All right, or you can go from the CD-ROM for Ubuntu 20.04, uh, Focal Fosa, if you want to. Other software, uh, you can select the Canonical Partners or Canonical Partners source code if you want. For updates here, you can do daily updates. Uh, for other packages, you can do all updates, or you can do security updates only, or security and recommended updates. I have it under all updates. This is your preference. You can do a daily uh, check, or you can do every two days, uh, weekly, every two weeks, never. Um, when and where uh, for security updates, you can download and install automatically here, uh, or you can do uh, display immediately or download automatically, uh, display weekly, daily, whatever. Okay, I've got it display weekly. Notify me of uh, new Ubuntu versions for long-term support versions never or any version. I'm going to leave it at long-term support. Uh, additional driver support here and authentication here for trusted software providers and you want to make sure you have those. And then there's live patching. I have not turned live patching on. This is a, a virtual machine so it's not really nonsensical to turn live patching on. Um, I do not even have live patching set up on my uh, laptop so uh, I have used it in the past. It does work well. I just choose not to use it right now. What live patching does, if you're not familiar, is it allows you to uh, update your system while you're running. And if you're running a server on the system, you can actually install updates to that and restart the server. Uh, live patch it, rather, without restarting the server, having to shut it down and restart it. Let's close that. And uh, since it's out of date, and so let's just go ahead and close it. Okay, so let's uh, get back in. And so now we've got the uh, Solitaire, Calendar, Cheese, Files, Firefox web browser. Let's go up on the Firefox web browser and see what version it's running. And let's expand that to full screen. And let's see what we, ha what we have here. Uh, under Help About Firefox, we are running Firefox 76.0. 64-bit. That is the latest version of Firefox web browser. So you get the latest version out of the box here for Ubuntu 20.04. Um, I am connected. Uh, I'm connected wired. So let's see if I can go out on the web. And I am able to do that. That's good. All right. So let's go ahead and close that. I like, uh, I like this uh, particular browser, but I I'm using Brave browser now, and I don't have Brave installed here, uh, although it is available. I can go up and grab it, but uh, I'm not going to do that in this video. 
All right, so let's go back. Um, there's GIMP, there's uh, language support, LeafPad, Calc, Draw, uh, Impress, and Writer. There's the live patching. There's uh, some games. Ramina, Rhythm Box, if you want to play your, your music. There's your settings, your shot well for your screenshots, software and updates, software updater. And then here's the frequent one. So when you open a uh, application just like GNU uh, image manipulation program GIMP that I just installed uh, version 2.10 once you do that it comes up on the frequent list as one of your frequent uh, software applications that you have okay so this has been uh, it's been a quick review here of um, Ubuntu um, I would uh, highly recommend going into settings and working with this so that you can set this up the way you want it um, you just go into settings and um, you can go down to um, appearance and so let's uh, go out to let's see Bluetooth by appearance here we go appearance and I did change it to dark theme I did change the icon size and position of the uh, of the uh, panel itself uh, you can do other things uh, you can actually make the panel go away, uh, you know, hide it if you want. And um, for applications, like I said, you can change this if you like um, and do other things here in, uh, in that. So if you right-click on the desktop, you can do Show Desktop in Files, Open in Terminal. You can change the background. You can change the display settings here. Uh, and you do have the fractional scaling, as I mentioned. Um, let's see, there was something I wanted to look at. Um, I don't see it here right away. Let me go back and right click and display settings. Yeah, display settings. Um, open in terminals. You can open the terminal directly from your desktop as well. And what I wanted to do was turn, take these away, and I'm trying to remember how to do that. Um, it's under settings I believe and I believe it's under the appearance area well how to auto hide the dock if I come back to the dock I'm close this uh, the dock should go away but it is not auto hiding it's interesting so I'm not sure if that's working the way it should um, white standard dark Applications, search notifications, displays. Um, you do have uh, nightlight here, by the way. If you uh, use your Ubuntu 20.04 LTS at night, you can turn nightlight on and set the time of the day that you want from whenever to whenever. So, for instance, if you wanted to set this uh, time here from sunset to sunrise or manually schedule, you can set this like from 8 o'clock at night, 20 hundred, um, to let's say 6 in the morning or you want to say at the 5 in the morning or whatever. What happens is you can change the color temperature here from a less warm to more warm. Um, and so it just it helps uh, your eyes uh, adjust to the difference. The color temperature also, if you're using this at night when you go to bed, uh, if you leave it off, and don't use it, uh, it has been shown in studies to interfere with your sleep. Uh, so leaving night mode on works better for you. So let's go ahead and let's, I'll turn that off for now. And let's turn that off here. And Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and get out of this. And so this has been Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Quick review of it. Quick look at it. I like it. I like what I see. Uh, I do use it on the laptop. I highly recommend you do use it as well. So let's go ahead and power this off and power off. So have a good day. This has been Data Pioneer for the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.